Are you Are you guys there? Hi, Jerry. How are you? Oh, hi. Uh, I'm good. I've got to start this off in my car on my phone, so I apologize. I had to pick up some cats. So. Oh, uh, I know that so well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we're just waiting for. I only have like about four or five people who ever signed up, so we'll wait. Okay. For, wait for them to jump on. But, okay, uh, great. So, where are you located, at? Uh We're in Colorado, in Denver. Oh, is this the Colorado Rescue that I spoke to yesterday also? Yeah, she talked to Heather yesterday, Colorado Feline Foster Rescue. Yeah, she yes. was on yesterday. So I'm on today. And now you in Colorado because she, you know she was in New York. Well, she's in New York and she can do everything that way. No, I'm in Denver. Um, we're based in Denver or Morrison. So, so you're um, on the street. You're out there saving I'm me. I'm here. Yeah, we, we are here. Definitely. It's amazing, huh? I mean, once you get into it, there's it's like, like the Godfather movie, right? Once you're in, you can't get out. <laughs> I have that feeling sometimes. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's not a good feeling. <laughs> you know, it's so funny, right? I can't tell you how many times I said, "I don't know if I can do this anymore." Um, I don't know if I can do this. It's just, it's heart wrenching, and um, and then I get a call, and I go, "All right, we're in taking four more." <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, um, exactly. Yeah, I'm just, um, I don't know. I mean, I love what we do. I'm relatively new to rescue. I'm doing this about seven years now. Uh-huh. Um, and I am I see someone else join, Lon. Yes, that's me. Hi, Lon. How are you? Nice meeting you. I'm Jimmy. Hi, Jimmy. Oh, Carrie just dropped. This Carrie's back. Can you hear us, Carrie? You can hear us now again, Carrie? You're back? Yeah, I hear yep. you. Yep. Um, yeah, so I, I a little bit about myself. I mean, you know, we, we built this software, which um, I want to demonstrate and really want to do is get a lot of feedback from people, too, who are, you know, doing rescue like me. But, um, and I'm going to do is let me, I, I have this thing on the screen. I'm going to show you my face. I'm not afraid. Um, just keep in mind, okay, the camera adds, you know, 400 pounds, they say. So it's a joke. Get it? But there we go. Hi. So, um, but, you know, yeah. Right. I, I had a tech company uh, on Long Island here in New York. And I started it like 15 years ago. And we did websites and management tools for restaurants. And, um, you know, I had a couple of dogs and two cats. And that was it, you know. And there was a colony outside my office. Uh -huh. I had a pretty big office. And there was a colony there. And they, um, you know, I'd see these ladies feeding the cats. And I was no different than anyone else. You know, I thought they were the crazy cat ladies, you know. And you right. know, I, I have to have, I find that I try to have as much patience as possible with people when I see them on Facebook and coming for asking, because you know what, until there's education involved, you know, people just don't know what's really happening with these poor animals. So I, um, I, my daughter came home from college seven years ago and she came to work in my training department and she comes walking in my office with a kitten. And she says, Dad, can we keep this kitten? And I'm like, Brittany, we already have two cats and two dogs. I fell in love with this kitten so fast that within a week, we found the other two siblings. So now I had five cats at my house, right? Three kittens and two adults. Then I started helping the ladies feed um, the colonies. And then the winter, it was in November, and we were going to have really bad early, early winter. We were getting snow that November. And and this was 2017. So I um I actually had a warehouse associated with my office that we didn't use. I kind of put my boat and I had some storage there. I moved everything around and I got some fencing from Home Depot. And I had the women, they brought the whole colony indoors. So they didn't have to deal with the snow because these poor ladies used to shovel paths to get to the um, feeding stations and to the to the shelters. And I put that all on pictures on Facebook and I started getting phone calls from people. Can you help me in my backyard? I got I found a mom. I found a cat, you know, and 
in the first year, I couldn't believe what I spent on medical. And then I started realizing what rescues were going through. So I started my own 501c3. And, um, you know, you learn as you go along, you know, good protocol, proper procedures, you learn, um, you know, in the beginning, I didn't know much about medical, I didn't really know much about, you know, good ways to vet out adopters and stuff like that. And you learn, you know, and you learn by getting to know other rescues too. So um, my rescue grew to the point where um, in 2019, um, it was overrunning my house and my fosters, volunteers that we had set up. So we opened a cat cafe and I own a cat cafe in Huntington also in, in New York here. And that's where we do all our adoptions and stuff like that. And it was right before COVID. So that's a whole nother disaster. But we, um, you know, we, right now I have about 125 cats in my care and they're all in foster care and they all are, um, you know, I have like 45 at the cafe and the rest are all in foster um, you know, we take care of all the medical and all the adoptions and stuff. But what happened was we had sold our company, the um, uh, technology company, the website company, um, two and a half years ago. And now I was using all these different kind of tools for um, to manage my website. You know, I was using like Wix or Squarespace. I forget what my daughter was using to build a website and different, you know, pet finder to put your animals in and a constant contact for um, email marketing. And I was going on spreadsheets to try to keep track of all these animals. And it was, I said, there has to be like a better way. And what I started realizing and by talking to other rescues, because I reached out to not only like, I know every rescue here on Long Island and there's got to be about a hundred of them here on Long Island. But, um, you know, I talked to a lot of ones in different parts of the country and I was like, I could not believe how similar we all are, right? We're all underfunded. We all um, have no time because we're volunteers. This is not a job. You know, we're all working nine to fives and coming home and then taking care of animals on our nights and weekends. And, you know, whenever we have days off and stuff, um, we're doing what Carrie's doing right now. You're going out and saving, uh, uh, picking up a cat, you know? Um, I do that all the time. Um, I calls mom, mom with nursing babies in their backyard and an animal just got hit by a car. It's like, that's all we do. We run around. And then I see what a lot of these rescues go through with dogs. It's crazy down South, you know, with the amount of dogs that are um, being pulled from shelters. So me and my wife are going to actually start fostering dogs also uh, more on a foster base. I don't want to get involved in the adoption of dogs, but you know, to help out. But I saw that there was a need. And what I did was I, called up my former partner who was a programmer and I said, Hey, listen, what happens if we reinvent the wheel of our old company, but I want to focus on the rescue. I said, but it's gotta be, there's some key components here. It's gotta be attractive that it's going to help me get more adoptions and definitely more donations. I need donations because I just, the, the, there's a finite amount that I can personally do to support this rescue before I'm going to go be, be broke, you know? I said, it's got to be easy to use. I said, because not all my volunteers are tech savvy. And quite frankly, I'm not overly tech savvy, but I still need it to keep me organized. It has to be um, extremely cost effective. I was spending about $150 plus between all the different web platforms that I was using just to try to manage these animals and trying to think I was doing it right. And really what I was doing, it was making a mess because it was all interwoven, you know? And I said, there's got to be flexible. I said, because not every rescue out there is going to have the same needs that I have, but we're all basically pulling in the same direction. You know, we're out there saving animals, you know? So, he said, it sounds like that you want to put together a team to build your own rescue or website. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I said, no, we're going to build, I want to build a rescue community. So let's build a website. Let's build something to help manage our, our sites. I said, and then what we'll do is we can roll it out and we can bring on a lot of other rescues. And hopefully the more rescues we have, um, the more information that we can all kind of share and help each other. And I think that, you know, uh, there's something that we can do here. So we started this company called One Click Rescue. And um, I'm going to show you some stuff real quick. So this is our One Click Rescue. Okay. And 
again, you know, we're rescuers. So we designed this, but we're not like a tech company saying, I'm going to build a technology for this particular <laughs> space. Excuse me, a little cold. We are actual rescuers first. And I think that's why we were kind of successful in our last venture is because my family owned restaurants. So I knew what a restaurant guy wanted. If I told you how many people that came um, to our restaurant and tried to stuff different tech and website stuff down our throats, and we couldn't either, either we couldn't understand it. And when we understood it, we didn't have the time to do it, or it was just too expensive. It didn't fit in our budget. So I knew where the restaurant was coming from. That's how we tell it at last product. Well, same thing here. You know, I've gone out and I, I searched so many different shelter management softwares, use some of them. Some of them are not bad, but a lot of them are cumbersome. It was like too much of a learning curve. And a lot of them are starting to get more expensive. Too much time, you know. Um, I find that, you know, time was my my biggest, my biggest enemy. Like I don't have time. If I, I work during the day, and then, you know, I have 125 animals I'm caring for and I'm running around to vets and foster homes. And in my rescue, we actually do home visits to to check for people, you know, when it, we do adoptions. So um, um, I'm running around doing home checks and I do a lot of it myself, you know. So I, I didn't have time to use these other softwares to fully take advantage of their features. So I wanted to build something that was easy, something I could do in my car, you know. Um, especially like fielding uh, adoption applications and contracts, the simplest thing in the world, right? But I used to have a form, a Google form. It would come in my email and I'd have to get it and print it and look at it. And if they liked it, then I'd have to put the information into like a, um, either a paper contract or a doc you signed and email it out and then go there and get Stripe payment or get a check or it was just too many steps, you know? So I said, let's make this a little simpler. So we use our experience, design what we do. And um, I'm going to display it to you. But again, we are one of you. We are a rescue. All right. And all of us, what are we? We're all volunteers. We're coordinators. We're just animal lovers. We're trying to make a difference. All right. You two are like that. I know that. Right. Because you wouldn't be on this call at this time of night if you weren't. Um, what do we care about? We want to just, I'm sure if you guys run these rescues, you want to make your operations a little smoother without hassle. Like you want to make your operations smoother, but you don't have time for our learning curve. And I think I think I overwhelmed Heather yesterday. And that was a good demo I did yesterday because you know what it did? It kind of taught me to reel it back. And there are a lot of features that we have. But in the beginning, I got to show you what's most important that you're going to care about and realizing that it's super easy, you know. Um, and that's what we're going to kind of focus on. Um, so the preferences that we have, again, it's going to be easy to use, extremely budget friendly. Um, and I, I we think we're going to put that word in free. Let's put it that way. And if we're going to have great support. I have a team of people that I employ in this new company who are handpicked. A lot of them were from my previous company, so they understand how to do support and use the technology. But most importantly, guess what? Every person in my team is involved in rescue at this point. OK, I handpicked it that way because they have to understand the mentality of the people that we're talking to because the importance of what you're doing, you know, and we're making, again, these tools that are going to save you time, reduce the hassle and, and help you just be focused on saving more animals. Um, so what we have here is and I just throw a couple of little bullet points in here, right? It's going to be a custom design website. I'm going to show you an easy to use animal management tool. When you put your animals in, which is from a phone at anywhere, I mean, if you're putting your animals in Pet Finder now, you can put it in here. And it's easier to put in here because I use Pet Finder, or at least I used to. You could put it in our system easier than Pet Finder. And guess what? It shows up on your website, not in a portal of Pet Finder on your website. And our site exports the information and automatically puts it on Pet Finder and Adopt the Pet. So you still have. You're entering your data like you're doing now, but you're going to do it easier, and it's going to go in one step everywhere. Um, we have custom forms. You can go in there and build all your forms. And again, it was brought to my attention that most of us aren't going to have time to do that. That's fine. Most of the websites that I see out there for other rescues, they have their application forms online. My team can go in, 
duplicate your forms on my online form system. This is free of charge. We'll build the forms. You send us a copy of your contract. We'll build the contract and it's done. You want to make modifications? We can make modifications down the line. We can do training and train you how to log in and do the stuff yourself. But again, we want to set everyone up to, su to succeed and um, we'll get all that stuff set up for you. I added a medical record keeping. I noticed a lot of other softwares had medical records. It was a little bit rougher to use on some of them. So I wanted to make it really super easy. So I made it that um, when you log in, you see a list of your animals and you can click on a medical tab and literally put everything from weight management, any health concerns, um, if they're on medication and listen to this, right? Say they're on clavamox or azithromycin and they're getting that medication a couple of times a day. Um, you can put that in there and it's going to remind you to do that dose. Because I can tell you in my own personal rescue, I can tell you how many times I've had an animal in foster care and they went to a um, um, a foster and I have to call and say, did you remember to give them the medicine? And they're keeping notes on sticky pads and stuff. So we kind of put this in the system. Does everyone need it? Maybe not. But if you want it, it's there, which is kind of cool. And the big thing is going to be donation collection. We have donations built into our system already that you can solicit donations. And even on checkout, when somebody is actually doing the adoption and paying their adoption fee, you can solicit a donation. You have a donation tab on the website. Um where we have a lot of stuff. We've only been building this for 15 months now. So we have a lot of stuff on the drawing board, like auto-generated donations. I'm going to show you something in a few minutes on my website. I just did a fundraiser. I had an animal that was sick, two-year-old kitten I've had since he's, I don't know, eight weeks, nine weeks when he found him surrendered. He had to have an eye inoculated. Um, there was a lot of stuff going on with that kitten in the beginning. Just, um, I don't know, Two weeks ago, he, he was at the cafe, and two weeks ago, the girls called me and said, he, Raider doesn't look right. Um, he's very congested, but he's very lethargic. I brought it to my vet. They did blood. They called me the next day, and he's got extremely high kidney values. So he spent three nights in an emergency veterinary a vet in, um, you know, hospital. The bill was $4,700, right? I ran a fundraiser with my people because, you know, when, when people join your mailing list or we get them off of social media, we, we you know, complete that mailing list. And I did an email blast out, but I'm going to show you the page that I built on the website. And I collected um, half of that money within eight hours from my donors, you know, because it's the way you word it and stuff. And we can help you with that. But we're actually building this into the system where it can be done automatically, which is going to be really, really cool. So, um you know, you think about it, well, how hard is it to set up? It's nothing. You're gonna if you'd go to our website, you'd literally go in and sign up. It's free, no credit card, nothing. Sign up. We get an email. Okay. We are gonna look at your old website. We're gonna build a new website, call you, you critique it, whatever. Um, we're gonna enter all your forms and all that stuff, and we're gonna train you on how to put your animals in. All right. You're gonna get that full exposure, and then you're gonna start seeing your applications come in. You know, it's simple as that. If you're if you're getting applications now, um, Lon, how many um, app, how many adoptions do you do a month? Three hundred, probably. Three hundred adoptions. Yes. Wow. How do you keep that organized? What software do you use? Uh, currently using Salesforce. Salesforce. Yeah. What What is your organization? It's Helen Woodward Animal Center. AnimalCenter.org. Wow. And where is that located? What state? What state was that, you said? There you go. I lost California. your first. Wow. That's quite a bit. Um, and... Um, and over there in Colorado, how many do you guys do a month, you think, adoption-wise? Carrie? Carrie's back. All right. Is that better? Yes, much better. Okay. We do between 100 and 120 a month. Adoptions? Adoptions, yes. 
Wow, you my idol. Oh my <laughs> god. Both you guys. I want to like I want to get your can I get a portrait of you guys I can hang up at the cafe and say yeah. this is what I want to aspire to be someday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're all private 501c3s? Yes, we are. Wow. That is fantastic. Oh my god. That's my dream. How many volunteers do you guys have on each organization? Um, you know, I don't know because I don't do the volunteers, but um, not enough. We've got about 70 or 80 foster families. And then we probably got um, maybe 20 to 25 other volunteers that do other miscellaneous things. And you have any facilities or are they all... Options no, out. we're totally foster based. So we don't have a storefront. We don't have cages. We don't have a facility. Everybody is raised in a foster home. Oh my God. I want to have you over here for dinner. You're amazing. Which works a lot better than the overhead of a facility. Oh, tell me about it. Yeah. I, I run it with the cafe. And Lon, how many volunteers do you have? We're about 600 um, active and uh, about 300 fosters. Um, not all active at the same time, obviously, but on call. Wow. Um, now you manage your animals in Salesforce? Yes. And what is your website address now? I want to take a peek. Animus, animalcenter.org. Hey, Lon, where did you say you're located? San Diego. Oh, San Diego. Oh, my gosh. No wonder. Okay. But you're on Salesforce? You didn't take any of the other shelter programs? Uh, no. Couldn't find one that I liked. How long have you been around? Well, see, we, we've we been around since 1972, but um, we started about 12 or 15 years ago with Salesforce for the donation part of it and the nonprofit success pack, stuff like that. And so we already had the Salesforce platform for our, donator, our donors. So um, I went ahead and built something for the, for the platform to run the adoptions, medical and oh. everything um, from okay, start so to finish. Been- you built onto that. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, but it's just not a very intuitive platform. So it's um it's it's met with some resistance at some point because it's um Salesforce is complicated and not super intuitive, especially when you're morphing a peer-to-peer sales platform into a <laughs> animal management software. It's not quite doesn't quite yeah. fit. I use Salesforce for the company. We manage you have, a, you have a building? Uh yes, we do. Okay. So yeah. you're so you've got a storefront. Okay. And but we you're also not a have municipal center. You're you're a regular just nonprofit. You guys set up, huh? I want to three. We don't um, take any federal funds or anything either. Wow. Well, I'm dead serious. I like want both of you guys to like. I want your like headshots up, up on my wall and say this is who we want to be when we grow up. <laughs> this is amazing. But I'm going to show you my software, and I'll show you what you can do with the website and the animal management portion. Now, I'm going to show you the most basic thing that you can do. And then I don't want to lose, if, you know, if you guys got the patience to watch, I'll show you how you literally, with that many volunteers, you can have your volunteers literally sign up here and give them login access. But they, when they log in, they can only see the animals that are assigned to them. And then when they're logged in, they can, if there's medical that needs to be addressed with those animals, they can go in there and address the animals because they're going to get alerts on their animals only. But you guys, as the administrator, when you log in, you'll see all 400 animals you have. And then there's a tile at the top that'll tell you who didn't get their doses today, you know, platform wide. It can be as extensive as that. And it's easy, you know, adding the animals are super easy and then fielding the adoptions and stuff. Uh, I know Salesforce is not cheap. You must be paying a ton of money for that. For Salesforce to do this, but so the reason we started on it is that um, they give away ten enterprise licenses to nonprofits, so it's zero to start, and that's about a ten thousand dollar giveaway for them, um, which is great. Um, but if you want to use imaging or special document preparation, you right. have to add on, you know, paid services in order to extend it. Um, but that's sort of why we went with it to begin with, is that um, you can have ten licenses, which you know we. Sh- you can share a bunch of licenses too. You only, you know, the average shelter only needs one or two um, license, but um, that's that's why we went for it to begin with. Well, what we did was, and um, before I even I'll, before I even show you the product, I'm going to tell you how the, our pricing works. 
My obviously we have tremendous overhead too, right? Because I got all the developers, the programmers, um, people I'm working in customer success, the people that are building the sites. When we in my old company, we used to charge about 200 bucks a month for a restaurant. Rescues are not going to pay 200 bucks a month. You guys are the um, exception, not the rule. Um, you guys are like I said, what everyone wants to be when they grow up. Um, and I applaud this, and I'm so super excited to talk to you guys. It's those little, there are a lot of little rescuers out there that do, you know, 15 adoptions a month, you know, and they're managing this out of their apartment. You know, they need a lot of help too, and they can't afford anything. So we, and, and I did my research and, you know, none of us, and no matter how big our rescue is, even you guys who are huge, you know that no matter how much you bring in, in um, adoption fees, you're going to rely on donations and stuff. And it just never seems to cover it, right? You get a litter of kittens or a bunch of dogs and their spay, neuter and vaccinations and everything else you do, your adoption fees barely, if cover it. And then you need one of them to get sick in that litter. And that's it. You know, your budget is shot. So, um, but you know who has the money is the people adopting the animals. That It's a billion dollar industry, you know, and they're valuable, those people. So what I did was I said, what happens originally we were going to charge, and this is the kind of, I want, I want to get feedback from you guys. I want you to be honest with me, right? And then I'm going to show you the product. Then we'll, you can tell me your feedback on the pricing after. Originally, we were going to charge $35 a month. And that gives you a website, email marketing, animal management, contract forms, unlimited everything. But what we charge, we're going to charge was five dollars per adoption. But you know who pays it? The adopter. Okay, so you, if you, I have a hundred and fifty dollar adoption fee, and when I send out my adoption link, they pay my adopters and anyone else who's using my platform, and no one has an issue. They would pay the full adoption fee. If they pay my credit card, I used to always lose 3% too, which used to burn me, right? The person who adopts can leave an additional donation and then they pay an additional $5, which clearly says this is covering our technology so we can continue our mission and save another animal. Not only do people don't have a problem paying the extra amount of money, but they, um, so you get the software for nothing, but they were leaving additional donations on top of it, which I thought was awesome. And then I was talking to some other rescues in other parts of the country and actually some of my top veterinarians down there. And they said, give it away for free. He goes, instead of charging $5, charge $10 to the adopter. But again, it's the way you present it to the adopter. So it's not the rescue charging it; it's us. He goes, but then give everything, every tool, email marketing for free. I mean, I, do, I have 19,000 people on my mailing list. Okay, if I was to pay for that alone, that's two hundred and ninety dollars a month. It's free in this platform. So, um, but I'm forging partnerships with other companies. And Heather was telling me, um, Carrie, that you guys already do that partnership with um, Royal Canaan, right? Carrie. Did I lose her again? Just a second. <laughs> uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. We've we've always fed exclusively Royal Canaan, but we've just now started on their Shelter. program, which kind of sucks. Why? But we're giving it a try. Why? What don't you like about it? Um, the adopters are not excited about it. They're not activating the card. They're not getting the freebies. Um, it's very cumbersome to do from a foster-based um, position. See, I, I had them come in to see me in New yeah, York. They'd, they'd come in to see me, see us too. Right, but I was talking about my rescue, but I was talking about this platform, and I said, listen, what happens if I automated it? And you, I don't have to rely on my fosters. I don't have to worry about someone scanning anything. That they get an email, and it just it's an email from my rescue thanking them for adopting this pet with the pet's picture. And saying, you know, we so grateful that you adopted the animal. Just so you know, he was eating this food when he was with us. And if you buy it from them and you continue to feed him, guess what? They're going to donate 10% back to us so we can continue our mission. You know, again, we're going we're to leverage the relationship because I want to put money back to the rescue. And I think that the QR code thing kind of turns the relationship over to between the customer and Royal Canaan, you know, and the relationship should stay between the shelter 
and the animal, you know? So let me show you um, this product. I'm going to start a little demo here because I don't want to keep you guys all night. But um, we're going to share... Um, Okay. All right. You see this website? This is one of our websites we built. This is a, a person that we're doing in Florida. Okay. And again, you can have unlimited pages, forms, and you'll see the pets. It's not an embed of um, of 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 um, pet finder or anything like that. It's a structured database of animals that you can go in here and put in. I'm going to show you how easy it is to put it in. Um, in here. You have um, join your mailing list. You kind of put in applications if you want to foster. You can put in here. Um, and again, each each website will be totally, totally custom built. Um, here's another example of another look and feel. Okay. And again, um, calendar events and all this kind of stuff. Anything can be done. Um, here's a rescue that we did. Um, and again, hyperlinks. Now, here's the beauty of this, right? We're going to build it for you. I mean, we're not going to say, here's the program. You got to go build it. I mean, obviously, we're going to – we'll train you. If you want it, if you're creative, and a lot of people are, and you want control of it, you got it, right? But if you want us to do the initial build and you want to go in there and make changes, you can. Simple as that. Same thing over here. This is a veterinarian that we did, and she's actually heavily involved with us as far as referring, and we're working out something with veterinarians, too, that we want to, after adoption, try to work out a referral feedback to the, um, you know, the rescue if they refer people for a medical care. But um, this is my website. Now you'll see here, like you can put custom pop-ups. Like this is Raider, the one that got sick. So I have a pop-up that says help save Raider, right? And if I click read more, it goes to an animal, um, this picture, a donate, which goes into our system. I have the little description about Raider. Quite frankly, this was written with AI through our system. I put the images of the bill that we paid. And at this point right here, it was already $1,400 was raised. And I had I put everyone's name in here who donated. This I did this yesterday afternoon. But um, we're actually going to automate this system, okay? But kind of what's cool about this is, let's say you want to change a picture. When you log in, you click the build site right? And everything goes into a grid and you can add any kind of element you want. Keep in mind, you don't have to do this. I don't want you looking at that and saying, oh, this is too much work. We're going to do it for you. You want to change an image, you can just go in there, you can drag and drop a new image, you can put it up and then be done. It's that simple. Um, so that's the website builder, you know, and the websites are completely flexible, um, as far as pages, whatever you have, we can duplicate it. Our system, and this is a proprietary, this is not a third party, this is not um, WordPress or any plugins. This is all our stuff, but you can make unlimited amount of pages in here and just keep creating, adding pages and whatnot. So the flexibility is tremendous on this, okay? Now, the animals, and these are my animals, that pop up is going to get annoying for me. Um, You'll see the animals here. They, they still didn't put Diesel's picture up, but you can see all the different animals here and there in a database. And if I were to look at, for an example, Vela, okay, I can go in here and click and adopt. It's going to show the location, all of Vela's stats, who her siblings are, okay, and then the rest of the pets on my system. So in other words, it's not bringing me out the pet, pet finder. Now, when I put this animal in, Yes, it's going to export this to Pet Finder, but I don't want, if someone's going to take the time to come to my website, I want to keep them on the website and show them the stuff here, okay? So I'm going to start with, I want to show you how I put an animal in, and then I want to show you what a person sees and what how fast it is for you to process an application and an adoption, okay? So what I'm going to do is, I do this from my phone. You can do this from the back end too. In fact, you know what? This is the volunteer login. And this is what your dashboard would look like where you can have all your stats and your financials all be built into here. See daily medication and stuff, whatever you want to see. And then you'd have your list of animals. Okay, I can click on the animal list. 
and it'll bring me up all my animals that I have in this system, and I can assign them to anyone. Now, you guys are bigger organizations, so literally you can come in here and you go to your people and you can have fosters. And I'm going to show you a little bit. It's pretty cool. You can put your um, a, a form on on your website that says, you know, to a volunteer application. If someone gets approved, then there's a button that says you want to invite them. And if you click invite, it'll send them an email. And they can create their own username and password. But if they log in, they can only see information that they're assigned. So it's actually pretty, really, really cool. But this is the animal list, right? But I'm going to show you what how I put an animal in. And I'll do this from my phone. So I'm going to screen share my phone. And it's on this screen here. So we're going to move it over. Okay. So now you see it's responsive website too, right? So it's all beautiful on the phone. All right. And if I come in here and I can go volunteer login, I'm going to put in my username and password. Okay, and this is what my dashboard looks like on the responsive side. Now, I'm an admin, so I'm seeing all my different rescues that are, and we don't call them customers, by the way, they're members, because, you know, a lot of changes that we've made so far are suggestions from the rescues that come on board, you know? So anyway, this is my rescue, Feral to Family. So now there I am, okay? I just get a new animal. I click over here, and I go to my animal list, and I click animals, okay? So now this is what my animal list looks like on my phone. I can turn around and I can click this blue button. I can either add a new animal or bulk. Bulk is kind of cool because I can go over here and say, is it siblings or are they bonded pair? You know, if they're siblings, it lets me put multiple animals at the same time and basically compile the same birth dates and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to go just do a single animal. Okay. Oh, screen's not sharing. Let me stop the share. Okay. Okay, so let's go back here. We're going to go back to, I'm going to put a single animal in, make it easier. Now watch how easy this is to add an animal, right? Um, first and foremost, if I'm there, I'm picking up an animal, like you just picked up an animal tonight, I can take a photo. Or if I already have it, I can just go to my photo library. So I'm going to look at a photo library. And I'm going to look at fire. I'm going to find a cat. I wonder if I have a cat in my phone. Do you think I have a cat in my phone? <laughs> of course I do. All right. I add the picture of the cat. Okay. I'm adding a lot of images in there. I just selected them all. I don't think they need my credit cards, but I'm going to put it in there anyway. We'll take that out. And we'll take out that and that and that. Okay, so now, what kind of animal? You guys only do cats or you do dogs too, Lonnie? Yeah, we both cats and dogs. All right, awesome. So um, this is particularly one is a cat. Okay, so I'm going to put a cat in, and then we're going to name him Simba. Okay, he's available. Okay, now here's the cool thing, right? At location, these will be a list of all your fosters. Um... These are all my fosters here. And you can go in here and actually add as many as you want. If I attach it to Elizabeth, that Elizabeth, can you see this? I don't know why it's not showing my mirroring is not properly working. Oh. You know what it was just doing? It was mirroring to my TV. My wife's in the other room and she was watching this. You know what, I'm just going to add it from here. It's easier for you to see this, okay? But it's just as easy on a phone. So I hit new, okay? We don't need the phone. I'm going to hit new. We're going to take a picture. Again, you can do it from your phone, drag and drop it, or take a picture off your computer. Um, take that picture of the cat. Animal type, he's a cat. Uh, the name. Simba, he's available. Now here, this is what I mean about locations, right? These are all my fosters that I have. I can assign it, all right? If I assign it to J, 
Joseph. I mean, he's one of my fosters. That's his address and everything else like that. If it's a location, I have one adoption. I have my cat cafe, and I actually added in the town as Huntington. You can add unlimited locations. A lot of rescues have like a pet smarter pickup, but you can put it where it is, right? So I'm going to say this one is in Foster. Well, I'm going to say it's in Cappuccinos. Now, here's the cool thing. If you do have a location, which I know you don't carry, if you have a location, you can assign a volunteer also because a lot of locations that I know, if they're in a pet smart, that's where the animal is. So we tell people that you can go see this cat at the pet smart, but they may have volunteers that are responsible to go in there and feed, do the litter boxes, and do medication. So you can assign a volunteer. If the cat is in foster care, the, the by default, the foster is the volunteer, okay? And then easy, you put in your date of birth, okay? You date enter your system, what your adoption fee, um, you set up a de default you'll give us in the beginning, but you know you can override input whatever you want. And then for this particular cat, he's we can say he's brown, white, um, coat pattern, tabby, short. Obviously not the clawed. Now this is what's cool. You can go playful, um, adventurous, loving. Um, Found in a parking lot alone. Generate AI. It's going to make the description automatically for the animal. See that? It makes a beautiful description, right? Simba the cat was found in a parking lot all alone and looking lost despite being a little scared. He's incredibly loving towards the person who found it. So it makes a beautiful description. Then you say you're automatically going to put it on your website by default. You can put it on Pet Finder and Adopt the Pet also. If you have any other files you want to drag up here, surrender reports or anything like that, you can drag them. If you do have a microchip number, you can go in here and select what your microchip is. This is what's kind of cool. If you in when you do it in bulk, it would happen automatically, but you could also add in siblings and who's a sibling, or you know, he may come in and then we find that he's bonded. He's in your facility, Lon, and he just, you know, you find he's really bonded with Binks. So we're gonna say he's bonded with Binks and we click save. Oh, I gotta hit a gender. Okay, and he's domestic short here. And again, if you go to dogs, it's gonna bring all the dog breeds up, obviously. Okay, and we save him. You're gonna see a little green thing pop up and that's it, now he's in. So now, I go to the, my, back to my public page and there's Simba on our website, done. Now, this is a feature that you could turn off, but you see these banners? When you get an application, it'll say there's an application pending. You got approved application. I wanted that for my rescue because I used to put on a cute kitten like this and I'd get 10 applications. And then I call him and say, he's already got an application. Why don't you go look at Acorn? And they never go back and change the application. So if they see he's got it approved, he might've gone over here, but that feature can be turned off. And that's it. That's how easy it is to put an animal on here. Now I wanna show you the process on what you see to do an adoption, ready? If I click on Simba and I want to adopt Simba, you click the adopt and it brings up your form. These forms are customizable. You can give us your existing forms. We're going to put it in for you. Once it's in, you want to, we'll have a sample form in there, change it, add descriptions, whatever. But again, we'll take the time off your hands, right? So I'm going to adopt, I'm going to apply for my name, my email. Watch this. I'm born in 1959, full disclosure, okay? 2002, minimum age alert. The application requires applicants to be 25 years or older, but you are two years old. <laughs> I put in 2022. So you can set a minimum age. It's still going to let them fill out the app, but it's letting them know because I used to run into that all the time when people with 18 or 19 would apply. You know, I mean, if you want to, if your application is 19, that's fine, but you can set and it's going to also show you a flag later when you go to review the application. Now you put in your address and this is all tied into um, Google Maps and why this is important because as we develop as a company and as a group, I wanna to try to bring more and more features to help my rescue and your rescue and everyone other rescues. And by knowing the location, not only of you guys, but of the adopters, I'm trying to find goods and services that we can get to those adopters, but I wanna get a piece of that action to go back to the rescue. 
You know, like anything, like if it's like Royal Canaan, I'll use that as an example. But if there's other foods or services that we could try to get the adopter, that, that the adopter is going to spend anyway, why can't we get a percentage of that given back to the rescue to continue that mission, you know? So we'll know where that stuff is anyway. And this is our location. So then we click in here and then you can ask unlimited sections and questions. So I'm just going to breeze through this one real quick just to show you, but you can ask anything from fill in the answers, radio buttons, um, yes or no's. You can create flags on them. I mean, just tell them what you are and we'll set it up for you. And again, with a little training, we can show you how to do build the form too. Again, our, our goal is to get you using it, not necessarily just giving you software and saying, go figure it out. So we're gonna go in here and we're gonna put it here. Okay, 100% willing to adopt the pair. Um, references. Come on, one more here. I agree. I agree to permit a home visit. I agree it's undefundable. Anything else you'd like to add? They can digitally sign this. And if they're doing the app on their phone, they just do it with their finger, which is kind of cool. Save, and they hit submit, okay? Okay, and they submitted their application. Now, me, as a... You, I got notified on my phone just now that my rescue just got an application. That's on my rescue. But I'm going to show you what the adopter sees. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go to my email. Okay, when that opens up. So now I'm going to go back to the dashboard. How do you know you got an app? Well, you know you just got a, you got an alert saying check your forms, okay? We're going to build you not only contracts, and you can make multiple contracts. You can have a contract for kittens, contract for adult cats, contract for puppies, contracts for older dogs, um, contracts for pairs. doesn't really matter what kind of – you make you put the contracts in. We can put set them up here and put them out that people can digitally sign them for you, okay? Um, same thing with applications, multiple applications. Um, you give us the applications, we'll put them in. And basically, based on how you put that animal, you tag them as an animal, he's a bonded pair, it's going to know what application to pull into that animal automatically. You don't have to think about it. That's what's great. So I have submitted forms, okay? I have applications. These are my contracts that come in. These are contact forms. Contact forms are pretty cool too. I'm going to get back to that. Let's go to the applications, okay? These are... Applications that comes in, and oh, there's Jimmy's with Simba, right? So you, can, I do this right from my phone usually. I'm going to be honest with you, right? I can either download the PDF of that application, but you can preview it. If I preview it, it's going to tell me, hey, this application is under your minimum age. Now it's up to me if I'm still going to adopt it or not, right? I can go in here, call the person, and I can say, I'm glad you want Simba, but Simba has to go with the pair. He's under 20 weeks, right? So I can click over here and actually add in. Another another pet that they choose. So now I have two pets on the same application automatically, right? I can turn around and for your bigger organizations, you guys might like this, right? Let's just say I did call the person and um, I got the message. They didn't call me back because they sent in the app, right? I can go and hit notes and said, called, left, message. And it's in here. It's in their file. So now if any other volunteer goes to see that new application, they'll say, all right, Jimmy's already on it. He's cool. Okay. Now, if I turn around and process the application and they're good, I can hit approved. It's going to automatically send out this email. I can put a little extra information. Um, before we bring the animal, you must make sure that you close your windows. I don't know. Whatever you want to put, right? You click send an email and save. It's going to all be in the history of everything that happened, right? Acorn uh, was put in as Simba. We added Acorn. We sent out the app, uh, the approved. Now, the application's approved. So now the next step is I got to get this animal to them, right? But I got to get a contract signed and I got to get it paid. How do you guys do your contracts and payments now? Um, we do ours with Zelle or Venmo or credit card. They pay digitally. Long, same.
Lon, are you there? I don't know if I lost him. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just wasn't activated. Um, yeah, we. Um, I have an old school boss that wants everything, a paper trail for everything. So we basically uh, push documents out on printer and, and uh, have people sign them. I do have it set up sort of um, to do online signing, um, but we haven't Im implemented it yet. We got some of well, watch some of our uppers that are too afraid to do that. We put you'd sign up for Stripe in here, set up a Stripe account, which we back essentially, so that's where you automatically approve for to process the credit card. You don't pay the three percent. There's no percent. If you have an adoption fee of one hundred fifty dollars, you're going to get the full hundred fifty. The same as them giving you cash. Okay. Now, remember, I said you can do as many contracts as you want. If this application is approved. You don't have to go do a paper document. You don't have to send out a Zelle link. All you're going to do is go over here. These are your contracts. You can have as many contracts as you want. Dog contract, cat contract, you know, anything you want. I'm going to use that adoption contract. When you use the contract, it automatically puts the name of the adopter, the name of the animals. In this case, there are two of them. All their information. I can put in extra information in there if it says that they must be back in one month for a checkup, whatever you want. And I click send contract. And that's it. That's all you do. That's it. Now, what does the adopter say? Okay. There's the application contract. Just came in my email. That's how fast it came. Hi, your application is ready. I go sign and pay. Okay. And there's my digital contract. Now you can go in here and download this, put it in a file cabinet, do whatever you want. Right. I can sign it, save, and I hit continue. How do you get the med how do you the medical record to the adopter in I'm Colorado? Show you that in a you're heavily love that. Yep, you're gonna love that part. I'm gonna show you that. Now it says go to payments. You click the here, it says congratulations. You're gonna soon have your new addition to your family. You can change this verbiage, whatever you want. These are your two animals. Then I click continue. Now I'm trying to say, would you like to leave an additional donation? I can tell you about 75% of my adoptions, and I do about 20, 25 a month. Not like you guys, but you know, for my small place, it's not bad. 75% of them always leave between 25 and 50 bucks more. Okay. So um, let's just leave a $25 donation. And there's my adoption fee. There's the donation. There's the credit card processing fee that they're agreeing to pay. And that's all. I'll show you that on the homepage too. It's there. So, and then right now it's a $5 platform fee. We want to change that to 10 and make your fee completely free. Not a dime comes out of your checkbook ever to us for this thing. And then oh. you continue the payment. And, and there's your payment information, you know what I'm saying? So now they can go in here and put their credit card information in. And you can go to Stripe. You can download the app. And literally, you can – now, Stripe will charge you 1% or 1.5%, which is even half of what Visa would charge if you want. And then they'll do an instant transfer. In other words, immediately, if you need that money for something, can immediately transfer it into your account, like – push that button and you log into your bank and the money's usable. If you don't want to pay any percentage, it's next day. It hits your um, your information. And that's it. That's how simple that is. Now, when we go to the website itself, let me get back to um, Can you do Zelle and Venmo? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, not for the adoptions. I mean, listen, if you can, there's no advantage to you doing the Zelle or Venmo. The thing is, all you do is you have them sign a contract and then don't make them process the credit card. Then you go in there and your market is paid. And then you get it. You get well, their payments. We I require have payment before we get a contract. What's that? We require payment before they get a contract. Oh, you don't send the contract at the same time? Nope. They have to pay first. And then we pull together the contract with the medical record. Once we know that they're serious, which means they paid. Okay. Well, we can set that up that you would send out a link ahead of time if you want. The reason what we're doing is we're literally sending all, because it's already in there in the system. And I'm going to show you the medical, how that works. It's actually pretty cool, but it can all be sent out exactly at the same time. Like when I look at my animals, the thing is I want to process it 
through here. And the reason is, and you see the $150 fee, and it says here, please note there's additional standard. The option fee, there's a small additional charge to cover the technology and processing expenses. These supplementary fees enable our nonprofit organization to allocate the full adoption fee towards our mission of rescuing animals in need. Okay. So, I mean, again, never one person is never going to not adopt a $150 cat for $10. And at the same time, I never pay any fees. And I don't pay, you know, for email marketing, for any of that stuff. Um, now, let's talk medical for a second, okay? Sorry, it's, I'm going to interrupt here. Sorry, Jim. I, I got a hard stop. Uh, appreciate your time. I uh, wish I could see the medical stuff, but I got to go. Uh, just wanted to not drop off and disappear on you. So, what do you think of what you saw so far, Alon? Uh, looks pretty good. I think you got something going here. Yeah. Do you it's think nice. it's something that's worth a further conversation that you guys might be able to blend in? Um, I... Do you have a recording the webinar or anything like I'm that? I'm going to record the webinar. I'm going to email it to you. How's that sound? Perfect. Then and I Carrie, can... I'm going to do the same thing for you. So now, Carrie, it'll be me and you alone. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks. Right. Right. Now, let's talk medical. Okay? Uh -huh. Um, I'm going to use Alexa. I can call... I have Alexa sitting on my desk, and the blue light just went on. It's going to ask me what I want. Can you believe it? So I can move over here and edit my animal. That's Alexa. There's a medical tab. Now, I can come in here, and if he's got any health concerns, I can write it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what I found important, because I'm foster-based myself. I mean, I do have the cafe, but, you know, most of my animals are out in foster care. I have them do weight management. So in other words, I can see the weights. And they used to write it on paper and send me a photograph or text me what their weights are. And I would put it into a big Excel spreadsheet. So now what they do is they log in and they can add the current weight. So they can just click the add a weight, put in today's date, 10, oh, um, now let's go back. 10, 23, 2024. Let's say the weight is 8.7, add. And you see it shows he went up 56% from his last current weight, you see? So, mm -hmm. you know, you got a current weight. And I think it's important because, you know, um, I've had this, but you know what it's like with the medical, right? Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm not talking about the logging of the medical. I'm just dealing with medical in general. You know, if you wait till you find a cat that's starting to lose weight and then you realize he's sick, then you could have had, had off something at the past. So I like it that I'm checking the weights. Not everyone does it. I know a lot of people do kind of, like their volunteers to maintain that. Now, let's talk about medication. If there's a medication history, it's here. But if you have medication, so say you want to give her clavamox, and it's going to be uh, 1.2 mLs, you can change the frequency. And for, actually, the other it could be every other day or whatever. But let's just say it's once a day. Let's keep it simple, right? And say the start date is yesterday, 10-22-2024. And the end date is the 29th, right? And we can say has a URI, okay? I can add. Not to interrupt you, but what I really want to see is what does the medical record look like? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm, I'm, I'm entering this information that you can see the export. Um, Real quickly, you could do this, and you don't need to do this if you don't want, but I know a lot of the volunteers, you can go to a dosage schedule and actually go in here and mark it complete. And then you, as the person who runs it, can see that everyone going in here. It's easier to do it on here, on their phone, than it is to do it on um, a piece of paper. And now adding your medical is the same thing. You want to add a medical record. You put the date of the procedure, what procedure was done, spay, neuter, FERCP, what veterinarian was used. Um, you can drag and drop that file, um, and then you're done. You add it, right? So now when it's mm -hmm. in here, this is what you can export this information. And I'm going to show you actually what's being released this week um, on, on a, um, uh, a PowerPoint. But this is actually live right here. <laughs> Some people definitely want to give them the attachments and the medical records. They don't really want to give them any health concerns. Some might want to give me, I'm fully transparent. I give them everything. And if actually sometimes they want me to send this to the veterinar uh, veterinarian, you choose what information you want to have sent out. Then if you export the file, 
This is what you see. The animal history, any health concerns that you put in, if you don't check it off, it's not even going to show up, right? Their weight history, what medications they were on, if you don't check it off, it's not going to be there. The medical records, and then the PDFs of all the medical records that you had taken photos with your phone or scanned in your scanner. It's all there. It's pretty cool, right? Uh-huh. All in one spot. Now, what we were going to do is, and I can show you if you want to, um, you're a little privy to some behind the scenes stuff now. We want to have it that when you send the contract, and you see, here's the beauty, right? Because I run a rescue, but I own this company, or I'm funding it right now, let's just say <laughs> it's not how to make money, but I can take a person like you who's coming on board and says, listen, I love it, but I want to make it that I can get the payment first. I can add that into my system. You can't just go to like, you know, Pet Finder and say, modify what you do to make it the way I want, you know? Right, right. Yeah, we We're know. flexible like that. Yeah. And guess what? If I add that feature and you like it, I can bet you a dollar to donuts. I can find another 500 people around the country who are going to like the same feature. You follow? So that's where working with me and working with my company is going to really come in good for you. So anyway, if we're here and then I go to hit that contract, again, I go to the same thing. I hit continue. Before it goes to send that contract that I showed you that I signed, it's going to ask me, do you want to send the medical also? You know, you can hit um, what I do want to send, what I don't want to send. You can say, I want to check it off. I want to send it to the adopter, and it's going to auto-populate the adopter's name. I want to also send it to the veterinarian, and I can put info at, you know, vca.com, or I can maybe send it to someone else, to carbon copy myself. Then I can continue, and it's going to have a confirmation. It's going to say, all right, I'm sending the contract, I'm sending that payment link, and I'm sending the medical to this person. The person, I usually don't do anything until I get a payment also, but I get a signed contract too. But the contract even says that, you know, nothing happens. The animal doesn't get picked up. It's still available and you don't get anything until I get the payment, you know? So that's why I do the contract first. I get the contract, now I have their information. But I, uh, I'm gonna send all that information and I click send email. And then they would get the email, just like I showed you, where they're gonna sign a contract, click next, put in their payment. And when they get the confirmation, it's gonna say, thank you, click here to download your documents. And they can click and then download their medical. In mm -hmm. some cases, now I can tell you, this is me personally, I'm a lot of times behind on medical. I, I don't always have it scanned um, up to date because I'm so busy running around. So my biggest issue is that I'll do an adoption. I get the adoption fee, I get the contract, and I got the medical done, microchipped, everything, right? But I haven't scanned it yet. And I get a call a week and a half later. Hey, can you remember to send me the medical? And it's embarrassing, right? So what we want to do is on that animal list, we're going to have all your active animals here. And let's just say when you got to this point and you said here, um, you're going to send, you're not going to, oh, where is it? Over here. Send the contract. And then when you go to send out the next part, you can skip and not send medical. And just said, oh, that's where it was here. I don't want to send, I'll send the contract and the payment. I'm not sending the medical. I know I still have to get them that medical eventually, but at least I got my money. They got their animal. I cleared a little bit of space, but now I got to remember, right? So we're going to have it set very clear. This is active. These are all my animals that are still available. There's action required in these 14 animals that'll be in this list when I click. And it'll say, you know, there's still open medical. Do you want to close it or do you want to click and send the medical now? You know, you can click. Um, same thing. And these will be all your completed, all the ones that have been adopted. It's going to be so simple and easy. I'm going to look at this animal, right? And I'm going to go back to my animals here. I want to show you something on the medical on the, on the phone. Okay. So let's go to Acorn. Okay, and I can click his medical. See the medical? And that's what, uh -huh. like. that's what it looks like on the mobile phone. So say I just went to the spay and neuter. I can click here and add a medical record. Put today's date, um, 10, 13, 2024. What was provided? FERCP2. Who was the veterinarian? Um, integrated vet. 
I can put whatever notes. And then if I want, I can literally go like this, take a picture of the document or scan it, however you want, use this photo. And I added it and that's how fast I just added the medical record. You see that? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I see that. What, what we've run into, into, into okay, okay, when we've, we've looked, looked at other programs, programs and we've looked at a lot of programs, is that they didn't have all the different medications that we would use uh -huh. and they would put them in, okay? It was very cumbersome to enter and I could write it on a piece of paper and then photocopy it off faster than entering everything on my laptop. So what we found is that we couldn't find a program that really addressed our medical needs because we do a lot of medical. That's where our money goes is to medical. Yeah. So, so my question to you is, I mean, it looks, your program looks great. I like how it prints out, but I'm also a bottom line person. Okay. And a lot of the features you have, we don't really need. We've already got a great website. Um, we don't need a lot of the stuff that you offer. Can we pick and choose what you can offer us? And bottom line, what does it cost? How is, how is the price going to be the same no matter what? Zero. Huh? Huh? Cost is going to be the same, zero. I mean, you're going to process applications through us, right? I would, I would assume, assume so, but, but you're, you're going to get how much? much okay, okay, how much are you going to get per application? Well, we don't... Are you planning on just using Venmo for your applications, or are you going to use our credit card processing? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, and that's not my department. I do the medical. Okay, Chris, right. the, third, the third person that works with us, right. um, she does all the finance. So right now we offer a number of ways online for people to pay. Stripe is one, Zelle, Venmo, credit card. Um, I don't know well, what Stripe else. is credit card and that's what we use, Stripe. Stripe is credit so card. If you okay. have a Stripe account, and your Stripe account will be integrated into here. Now, as far as well, the animals, I looked at your site, you have Pet Finder is your database that shows the animals on the website. Yes. yes, and they're right. horrible, and I'll, I'll give you that. that. What's that? But how much? But my question is because we don't have a lot of people that want to use Stripe. Okay, um, Venmo is the most popular. I'll just tell you that right now out here. Everybody loves Venmo, but if if there's no monthly payment to you, how much per animal are you going to make that we will put into the adoption fee? Because that's what you're telling me, right? Well, yeah, but we're not looking to, I mean, if you're saying hey, bump it up X amount of dollars and you're just going to raise the fee and pay us, I'd rather, I mean, if I can work around that and not have to have you do the math and, you know, charge your organization at the end, I mean, I'd love to be able to sit with the rest of your team and explore the, um, what is the negative of people not wanting to use Stripe, you know? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know. know. It's just... Venmo is the most popular. Venmo um, is just a they bank also have, bank. I'm okay. sorry, what? Venmo is just a bank to bank. Right. Okay. They can now, also they can also use PayPal. Okay. Right. We don't sure. see a lot, lot of a lot of stride. Right. But my it, question it depends is on how your app how you're applying it. Now, if you look at ours, right, I think that you can agree with me, right? That our animal page this way here on the site, if, we, if we're going to, if it pulls back it up in a second here, is um, this look and feel is better than the pet style, a pet finder look and feel. And we're not being brought to a third party site. If you, if you click on your website or we used to use pet finder embedded in our website, like you do, like everyone else does. The problem is that you're at in pet finders control now when someone clicks on an animal and if they want, they can scroll to the bottom and they can actually search other animals in their area and stuff like right. that. I right. I want to keep them here. Now, pet finder is super important because you're foster based. When I put Vela in here, she's on my website, but this information automatically, magic in the air, we don't even know what's happening, is being sent to pet finder. It's also on pet finder. Yeah. What does it cost per cat? We're, we were going to charge zero for like the website email marketing too. 
which I'll show you. And if you have the marketing people who do emails, because you do so many adoptions, you should probably be doing email marketing, which is free. The whole database, medical and everything is free. And we were going to charge $10 on an adoption, which was being paid by the adopter. Okay, okay, so, so you're gonna, gonna so you're gonna get ten dollars for adoption paid by the adopter if, if they, they use Stripe. If they use Stripe, yes. Okay, so they have to use Stripe. Now, if you told me that you're doing, and this is something that we could negotiate, we could figure this out because honestly, Carrie, I mean, I'm we just started. I mean, my last company was big. I had about thirty five hundred customers nationally. So I'm no I'm no stranger to scaling national. But again, we're working nonprofits here. So I'm just trying to help in the community. Um, there's so many things I have on my roadmap that I want to do down the road once we have enough clients on board. And I want to get people on board. And if you said, let's just say I said the average adopter was doing um, two, uh, 20 adoptions and I was going to do $10. And then I was able to get $10. $200 for that site a month that the rescue didn't pay for. And I'm just being very frank, right? And that $200 was enough to support people that I need to continue to do the programming to help. Not every organization is big like yours. We got to look at the little sister ones we have around us too and help them put animals in their database, help them do different stuff, um, you know, continue to make new innovations and stuff like that. And let's just say you're doing... Um, 300 adoptions a month, you said, right? How many did you say? You did? No, we do 100 to 120 a month. This is that you can automatically put on your website. We're going to have a merchandise module that you don't have to lay out a penny, but can make custom merchandise with your logos that can be shipped from a manufacturer right to the person and you make a commission on everything that's sold. We're going to be adding in so many different things into these websites just to drive up the donations. Okay. 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 I well, scared well, I, I spent $44,000. Okay. My wife wanted to kill me. Okay, okay, that gives me what I need. I have things coming down the road, Carrie, and I'll give you my personal cell phone and we can talk. That will blow your mind. I'm, I'm going to have different fundraisers. What I need to do is um, Heather and Chris and I need to have a phone call. And let me fill Chris in on this, and then we'll get back with you. Okay. Okay. What do you, um, think, though? you think this is something that you guys could use if we tweak some stuff? I believe so. Yes. yes. All right. Uh, I've discount gotta, the website too, because Heather seemed to like it. I give whoever does your well, website. We don't need we don't need a new website. We we've got a great website. It works for us. You know, there's certain things that we we've built, built over, over five, five years that we don't need to change around, right. and we don't have the volunteer base to be changing things around. No, I get it. I get it. So yeah, and, and I'm, not, I'm not being I'm not playing salesman, Carrie. I know you got to go, but we want to be like your tenth volunteer if you had not volunteers. If yeah. that thing is because a lot of people aren't like you guys, and if you needed us to make a change on a website, that's what we're going to be here for. That's what I did for restaurants. Okay, all restaurants right, well, that's, that's good to know. Good to know. Okay. okay, all right. Well, I got to go, but um, I will get back with you. Um, I'll talk to Chris tonight. Well, no, wait, not tonight. Probably first, first thing tomorrow morning. And um, then I'll get back with you. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh -huh. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.